Harold II was the last Anglo-Saxon king of England. Harold reigned from 6 January 1066 until his death at the Battle of Hastings on 14 October, fighting the Norman invaders led by William the Conqueror during the Norman conquest of England. His death marked the end of Anglo-Saxon rule over England. Harold was a powerful earl and member of a prominent Anglo-Saxon family with ties to King Cnut. Upon the death of Edward the Confessor in January 1066, the White Nagemoc convened and chose Harold to succeed. He was crowned in Westminster Abbey. In late September he successfully repelled an invasion by rival claimant Harold Hardrada of Norway before marching his army back south to meet William the Conqueror at Hastings some two weeks later. Family background Harold was a son of Godwin, the powerful Earl of Wessex, and of Gytha Thorkels Dutia, sister-in-law of King Cnut the Great of England and Denmark. Jether's brother was Ulf Jal, who married Cnut's sister Estreth. This made Ulf the son-in-law of King Swain Fork Beard. Ulf and Estreth's son would become King Swain II of Denmark in 1047. Godwin was the son of Wolf Noth, probably a Thane and a native of Sussex. Godwin remained an earl throughout the remainder of Cnut's reign, one of only two earls to survive to the end of Cnut's reign. On Cnut's death in 1035, Godwin originally supported Harthic Nut instead of Cnut's initial successor Harold Harefoot, but managed to switch sides in 1037, although not without becoming involved in the 1036 murder of Alfred Ethling, half brother of Harthic Nut and younger brother of the later King Edward the Confessor. When Harold Harefoot died, Harthacnut became King of England and Godwin's power was imperiled by his earlier involvement in Alfred's murder. But an oath and large gift secured the new king's favour for Godwin. Harthacnut's death in 1042 likely involved Godwin in a role as kingmaker, helping to secure the English throne for Edward the Confessor. In 1045 Godwin reached the height of his power when the new king married Godwin's daughter Edith. Godwin and Gytha had several children, six sons. Swain, Harold, Tostig, Gith, Lewine and Wolf Noth, and three daughters. Edith of Wessex when she married King Edward the Confessor, Gunhild, and I. Elf Gifu. The birth dates of the children are unknown, but Swain was the eldest and Harold was the second son. Harold was aged about 25 in 1045, which makes his birth year around 1020. Powerful nobleman. Edith married Edward on 23 January 1045, and around that time Harold became Earl of East Anglia. Harold is called Earl when he appears as a witness in a will that may date to 1044, but by 1045 Harold regularly appears as an Earl in documents. One reason for his appointment to East Anglia may have been a need to defend against the threat from King Magnus the Good of Norway. It is possible that Harold led some of the ships from his earldom that were sent to Sandwich in 1045 against Magnus. Swain, Harold's elder brother, had been named an earl in 1043. It was also around the time that Harold was named an earl that he began a relationship with Edith who appears to have been the heiress to lands in Cambridgeshire, Suffolk and Essex, lands in Harold's new earldom. The relationship was a form of marriage that was not blessed or sanctioned by the church, known as Mordanico, or, in the Danish manner, and was accepted by most lay people in England at the time. Any children of such a union were considered legitimate. Harold likely entered the relationship in part to secure support in his new earldom. In 1047 Harold's elder brother Swain was exiled after abducting the abbess of Lemster. Swain's lands were divided between Harold and a cousin, Bjorn. In 1049, Harold was in command of a ship or ships that were sent with the fleet to aid the German Emperor Henry III against Baldwin v. Count of Flanders, who was in revolt against Henry. During this campaign, Swain returned to England and attempted to secure a pardon from the king. 
but Harold and Bjorn refused to return any of their lands, and Swain, after leaving the royal court, took Bjorn hostage and later killed him. When in 1051 Earl Godwin was sent into exile, Harold accompanied his father and helped him to regain his position a year later. Then Godwin died in 1053, and Harold succeeded him as Earl of Wessex. This arguably made him the most powerful figure in England after the king. In 1058, Harold also became Earl of Hereford and replaced his late father as the focus of opposition to growing Norman influence in England under the restored monarchy of Edward the Confessor, who had spent more than 25 years in exile in Normandy. He led a series of successful campaigns against Griffith ap Llywelyn of Gwynedd, the ruler of Wales. This conflict ended with Grufford's defeat and death in 1063, Harold in northern France in 1064. Harold apparently was shipwrecked at Pontieu. There is much speculation about this voyage. The earliest post-conquest Norman chroniclers report that King Edward had previously sent Robert, Archbishop of Canterbury, to appoint as his heir Edward's maternal kinsman, William of Normandy, and that at this later date Harold was sent to swear fealty. Scholars disagree as to the reliability of this story. William, at least, seems to have believed he had been offered the succession but there must have been some confusion either on William's part or perhaps by both men, since the English succession was neither inherited nor determined by the reigning monarch. Instead the White Najamot, the assembly of the kingdom's leading notables, would convene after a king's death to select a successor. Other acts of Edward are inconsistent with his having made such a promise, such as his efforts to return his nephew Edward the exile, son of King Edmund Ironside, from Hungary in 1057. Later Norman chroniclers suggest alternative explanations for Harold's journey that he was seeking the release of members of his family who had been held hostage since Godwin's exile in 1051, or even that he had simply been travelling along the English coast on a hunting and fishing expedition and had been driven across the channel by an unexpected storm. There is general agreement that he left from Bosham and was blown off course, landing at Pontieu. He was captured by Guy I, Count of Pontieu, and was then taken as a hostage to the Count's castle at Beaurain, 24.5 kilometres up the river Cancha from its mouth at what is now La Touquette. Duke William arrived soon afterward and ordered Guy to turn Harold over to him. Harold then apparently accompanied William to battle against William's enemy, Conan II, Duke of Brittany, while crossing into Brittany past the fortified Abbey of Mont Saint Michel. Harold is recorded as rescuing two of William's soldiers from quicksand. They pursued Conan from Dolder Britannia to Rennes, and finally to Dinan, where he surrendered the fortress's keys at the point of a lance. William presented Harold with weapons and arms, knighting him, the Bayer Tapestry, and other Norman sources. Then record that Harold swore an oath on sacred relics to William to support his claim to the English throne. After Edward's death, the Normans were quick to point out that in accepting the crown of England, Harold had broken this alleged oath. The chronicler order at Vitalis wrote of Harold that he was very tall and handsome, remarkable for his physical strength, his courage and eloquence, his ready jests and acts of valour. But what were these gifts to him without honour, which is the root of all good, due to a doubling of taxation by Tostig in 1065 that threatened to plunge England into civil war? Harold supported Northumbrian rebels against his brother, Tostig, and replaced him with Morca. This strengthened his acceptability as Edward's successor, but fatally split his own family driving Tostig into alliance with King Harald Hardrada of Norway, reign as king. At the end of 1065 King Edward the Confessor fell into a coma without clarifying his preference for the succession. He died on 5 January 1066, according to the Vita Edward Regis.
but not before briefly regaining consciousness and commending his widow and the kingdom to Harold's protection. The intent of this charge remains ambiguous, as is the Bayer Tapestry, which simply depicts Edward pointing at a man thought to represent Harold. When the White Najamok convened the next day they selected Harold to succeed, and his coronation followed on 6 January most likely held in Westminster Abbey, though no evidence from the time survives to confirm this. Although later Norman sources point to the suddenness of this coronation, the reason may have been that all the nobles of the land were present at Westminster for the Feast of Epiphany, and not because of any usurpation of the throne on Harold's part. In early January 1066, hearing of Harold's coronation, Duke William II of Normandy began plans to invade England, building 700 warships and transports at dives sur mer on the Normandy coast. Initially, William could not get support for the invasion bit, claiming that Harold had sworn on sacred relics to support his claim to the throne after having been shipwrecked at Pontieu. William received the church's blessing and nobles flocked to his cause. In anticipation of the invasion, Harold assembled his troops on the Isle of Wight but the invasion fleet remained in port for almost seven months, perhaps due to unfavorable winds. On 8 September, with provisions running out, Harold disbanded his army and returned to London. On the same day Harold Hardrader of Norway, who also claimed the English crown joined Tostig and invaded, landing his fleet at the mouth of the Tyne. The invading forces of Hardrada and Tostig defeated the English earls, Edwin of Mercia and Morca of Northumbria, at the Battle of Fulford near York on 20 September 1066. They in turn were defeated and slain by Harold's army five days later at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Harold having led his army north on a forced march from London in four days and having caught them by surprise, according to Snorra Sturluson. Before the battle a man bravely rode up to Harold Hardrada and Tostig and offered Tostig his earldom if he would but turn on Harold Hardrada. When Tostig asked what his brother Harold would be willing to give Harold Hardrada for his trouble, the rider replied that he would be given seven feet of ground as he was taller than other men. Harold Hardrada was impressed with the rider and asked Tostig his name. Tostig replied that the rider was none other than Harold Godwinson. According to Henry of Huntingdon, six feet of ground or as much more as he needs, as he is taller than most men, was Harold's response. Battle of Hastings On 12 September William's fleet sailed. Several ships sank in storms, and the fleet was forced to take shelter at St. Valery sur Somme and wait for the wine to change. On 27 September the Norman fleet finally set sail for England, arriving, it is believed, the following day at Pevensey on the coast of East Sussex. Harold's army marched 241 miles to intercept William, who had landed perhaps 7,000 men in Sussex, southern England. Harold established his army in hastily built earthworks near Hastings. The two armies clashed at the Battle of Hastings, at Senlac Hill close by Hastings on 14 October, where after nine hours of hard fighting and probably less than 30 minutes from victory, Harold was killed and his forces routed. His brothers Gith and Lewine were also killed in the battle. Death the account of the battle, Carmen de Hastinger pro Elio, said to have been written shortly after the battle by Guy, Bishop of Amiens, says that Harold was killed by four knights, probably including Duke William, and his body brutally dismembered. Immartus of Monte Cassino's L'Histoire de Lee Normand, written 30 years after the Battle of Hastings, is the first report of Harold being shot in the eye with an arrow. Later accounts reflect one or both of these two versions. A figure in the panel of the Bayer Tapestry with the inscription, Harold Rex Interfectus Est, is depicted gripping an arrow that has struck his eye. But some historians have questioned whether this man is intended to be Harold, or if Harold is intended as the next figure lying to the right almost prone, being mutilated beneath a horse's hooves. Etchings made of the tapestry in the 1730s show the standing figure with differing objects. 
Benoit's 1729 sketch shows only a dotted line indicating stitch marks without any indication of fletching. Bernard de Montfort's 1730 engraving has a solid line resembling a spear being held over hand matching the manner of the figure to the left. Stothard's 1819 watercolor drawing has, for the first time, a fletched arrow in the figure's eye. Although not apparent in the earlier depictions, the tapestry today has stitch marks indicating the fallen figure once had an arrow in its eye. It has been proposed that the second figure once had an arrow added by over-enthusiastic 19th-century restorers that was later unstitched. Many believe that as the name of Harold is above the figure with an arrow in his eye, Harold died in an arrow volley. Further evidence is that an arrow volley would be fired before the Norman cavalry charge. This strengthens the arrow to the eye account. A further suggestion is that both accounts are accurate, and that Harold suffered first the eye wound, then the mutilation, and the tapestry is depicting both in sequence, burial and legacy. The account of the contemporary chronicler William of Poitiers states that the body of Harold was given to William Mallet for burial. The two brothers of the king were found near him and Harold himself, stripped of all badges of honor, could not be identified by his face but only by certain marks on his body. His corpse was brought into the Duke's camp, and William gave it for burial to William, surnamed Mallet, and not to Harold's mother who offered for the body of her beloved son its weight in gold, for the duke thought it unseemly to receive money for such merchandise, and equally he considered it wrong that Harold should be buried as his mother wished, since so many men lay unburied because of his avarice. They said in jest that he who had guarded the coast with such insensate zeal should be buried by the seashore. Another source states that Harold's widow, Edith Swan ashore, was called to identify the body, which she did by some private mark known only to her. Harold's strong association with Bosham, his birthplace, and the discovery in 1954 of an Anglo-Saxon coffin in the church there, has led him to suggest it as the place of King Harold's burial. A request to exhume a grave in Bosham Church was refused by the Diocese of Chichester in December 2003, the Chancellor having ruled that the chances of establishing the identity of the body as Harold's were too slim to justify disturbing a burial place. A prior exhumation had revealed the remains of a man, estimated at up to 60 years of age from photographs of the remains, lacking a head, one leg and the lower part of his other leg, a description consistent with the fate of the king as recorded in the Carmen. The poem also claims Harold was buried by the sea, which is consistent with William of Poitiers' account and with the identification of the grave at Bosham Church that is only yards from Chichester, harbour and in sight of the English Channel. There were legends of Harold's body being given a proper funeral years later in his church of Waltham Holy Cross in Essex, which he had refounded in 1060. Legends grew up that Harold had not died at Hastings but instead fled England or that he later ended his life as a hermit at Chester or Canterbury. Harold's son Ulf, along with Morker and two others, were released from prison by King William as he lay dying in 1087. Ulf threw his lot in with Robert Curthos, who knighted him, and then disappeared from history. Two of Harold's other sons, Godwin and Edmund, invaded England in 1068 and 1069 with the aid of dear mate Macmail Nama Beau. They raided Cornwall as late as 1082, but died in obscurity in Ireland. He is considered by some Orthodox Christians and theologians to be the last Orthodox King of England and a possible passion bearer. After conspiracy by William the Conqueror and Pope Alexander II to secure a strict Roman right over the British Isles, which at the time may not have yet realized the effects of the East-West Schism and still adhered to the Celtic Rite in most areas, marriages and children. For some twenty years Harold was married more Danico to Edith the Fair and had at least six children with her. The marriage was widely accepted by the laity, although Edith was considered Harold's mistress by the clergy. According to Orderic Vitalis, Harold was at some time betrothed to Adeliza, a daughter of William, Duke of Normandy. 
later William the Conqueror, if so, the betrothal never led to marriage. About January 1066, Harold married Edith, daughter of Ielfgar, Earl of Mercia, and widow of the Welsh Prince Griffith Apley Wellin. Edith had two sons, possibly twins, named Harold and Ulf, both of whom survived into adulthood and probably lived out their lives in exile. After her husband's death, Edith is said to have fled for refuge to her brothers, Edwin, Earl of Mercia and Morker of Northumbria. But both men made their peace with King William initially before rebelling and losing their lands and lives. Edith may have fled abroad. Harold's sons, Godwin and Edmund, fled to Ireland and then invaded Devon, but were defeated by Brian of Brittany.